started carp fishing, I suppose, in my me, me early teens, when I was 12. I caught my first one when I was 14, I think, March 1974 it was. And uh, all my fishing in those days was sort of local stuff, really, um, around where I lived in the, the Durrant Valley, Brooklands, Horton Kirby, Sutton. You know, it wasn't until I was 25 I actually learned to drive and that was the start of me venturing abroad, really. So it was a different world, really, but, you know, it was a good sort of grounding, really. It was a, it was a good experience and I'm pleased I grew up in those years. And, uh, yeah, a world of difference today, of course, but, you know, they were good days. Well, so here we are in France again, and uh, actually a short drive for me for a change. Makes a nice change, about three and a half hours from Calais, and uh, we're at the Estate Lake, which is an absolutely beautiful lake of about 20 acres, set in the grounds of a stately home. And uh, fortunately enough, we've got the whole lake to ourselves this week. Um, it's a little bit early in the year, so the water temperature's still down a bit, but good temperatures forecast this week. There's loads of lovely nice carp out there, so you know, just hopefully we're going to see a few of those this week. But um, this is just the start, so we've got to get the gear out, get it up to the swim, and uh, make a start. Well, I've got all the gear up here anyway, and uh, basically what I've chosen is a, an area of the bank which you can cover most of the lake from, really. Um, Hopefully I'm going to fish the shallows, that's the main aim, but if the fish are down the deeper end, I can cover that from here as well. So it's a bit boggy around here, but um, well that's it. <laughs> Time to set up camp now, so I'm going to get all the gear out and uh, get the bivvy up. Well, I, I always enjoyed me fishing in the UK anyway. I enjoy me fishing wherever it sort of takes me. But it was about... Yeah, I suppose it was the mid 80s, 84, 1984, and I started seeing pictures of fish from Cassian. And at the time, uh, I caught a couple of 30s, and that was the biggest fish I'd seen on the bank. I hadn't seen anything bigger than that. And here were pictures of like monster fish, more than double that sort of size. You know, they always go back to the Kevin Ellis fish, but that was like a, a landmark sort of photo for me, seeing that picture of a 76 pound mirror. And there was a lot of guys around the waters I was fishing that were saying it's not real carp fishing, you know, they're, they're like freaks and all that. And, you know, I just thought, I want some of that. <laughs> I looked at that and I thought, God, I want to I wanna be old in something like that. But it was more than just the fish, you know, it was the whole scenery, atmosphere, background, you know, the, the drive, the whole adventure of it that um, sort of really grabbed me, really. It was more, more than just the size of fish. But, but yeah, that was, that was when it all started, about the mid-80s. And... Uh, my life was never the same afterwards. all go you know it always is the first day it's it's always a mad rush to get the gear set up for one thing and, and get the rods out you always seem to be running out of time trying to get everything sorted before dark and uh, it actually looks really good out there you know I thought I'd go out in the boat and drop them and just see what was out there because it, there's a lots of little nooks and crannies and bays on the other side and as I went down the first corner I spooked about four or five fish straight away in the shallows and I thought they would be in the shallows yeah it's early days but it actually looks really good so you know I'm really confident tonight looks so good down there for a bite spooked the fish and I thought surely it's got to happen and sure enough it has. There was a bit of grating around something, a lot of old pads 
down there or rather new pads coming up I suppose always makes your heart skip a beat when it pings off or something Oh yes! Oh, what a result! I'm so happy with that. It's a nice fish as well. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's a good fish at all. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> oh yeah! Yeah, look at that. Wow. Thirty-six pound. Oh. oh, what a lovely way to start. Oh chuff with that. Fantastic. Lovely. There we go. See you in the morning sunshine. I was in a right deep sleep. <laughs> it's gone hammering off again. Wow, same rod as well. Oh yeah, I'm tired but God, so happy. Just first night and yeah. Yeah, great to be in amongst them. Oh, cracking little fish. I don't know what water temperature we've got here, but it must be pretty cold. My fingers are dropping off here holding this. So as you imagine, low single figure still. But there we go. He was out there feeding, so that's good enough. Well, they're in absolutely peak condition, but um, yeah, it's too early for loads of baits. So I've only been putting little groups out, but um, just enough to get a bite every time. Yeah, they're gorgeous fish, absolutely cracking. Well, what an absolute cracker. I'm really, really happy with this one. 36 pound of spring mirror and uh, well you just never know what's going to happen really. Last week was a struggle on here, I only had one fish all week so uh, you know I didn't know what was going to turn out but um, just this one alone has made it really worthwhile. result. God. We're happy with that one. Well these are my two baiting options for the week. Same rig actually, same rig for both. But um, I've got my Scopex squid and citrus, basically the good food bait with a bit of uh, attraction and that's sort of my favourite but just in case I've got my tiger nut rig as well, you know what tigers do, they uh, resist nuisance species like crayfish or even the bream and roach so uh, you know I know I can leave that out all week if need be, there we go, hopefully one of those will do the job. I hadn't actually heard much about this lake in particular until 
probably about a year ago and it was through Paul Arnfield of Arnfield Angling and you know he organises trips to some, some really nice waters all around this is quite north for him you know most of his waters are sort of further south but he has got some really really nice waters he, he sort of hand picks like the best what he thinks are the best and I agree with him you know he's got some stunners and, and when he said about this place he said you'll have to have a trip out here Steve because this place is absolutely fantastic and uh, yeah I'll tell you what he's right this place is absolutely beautiful I mean it's it's peaceful it's it's set in fantastic thousands of acres of forest are just over the other side of the lake there and uh, all you can hear is birds singing it's absolutely lovely this is what I love people say to me what sort of waters do you like and all that well it's, it's not a particular type of water I like it's how the water feels to me when I'm there uh, and it could be a massive great inland sea it could be a tiny little lake as long as it's got the right feeling and, and this has got it do you know what I mean this has got a, just a lovely chilled out feeling to it and uh, loads of lovely carp which always help but it's, it's nice here it's, it's beautiful I'm basically fishing locked up with tight lines because I'm sort of fishing to the far margin on most of the spots but to be honest I use tight lines a lot more than what I do slack lines you know there's situations for both really but for most of the time this is my normal sort of standard setup it's quite shallow out there anyway so the lines hitting the bottom a long way before we get to the rigs so you know in that respect the fish aren't bumping into the lines they're flat on the bottom well before any end tackle but it makes it much better for the indication you know I've only got the small slap heads on here but I have got two weights on each to give it that extra weight so that registers straight away indications much better and it's already tight you know for hit and hold situations Daytime action, which is brilliant. I was half thinking it was going to be a duck. I've, I've been getting wiped out a little bit on one rod by the ducks out there, which is, of course, the only problem with fishing shallow water, really. Um, so when I heard it again, I thought, oh, oh, and the rod tip was bent right round. Panic stations. Um, but it's away from the snags, and uh, we're doing all right. It's pulling quite hard, actually, but fish on. That's the main thing. They're certainly waking up. This one nearly pulled my arms off. But um, yeah, a 20 pounder, 20, 23, 24, I reckon. Lovely coloured fish. God, beautiful condition. And very hard fighting. Yes. 24, 24 and a quarter. Yeah, fair enough. I felt twice as big. Well, the colours are absolutely beautiful. We've got some of those sort of hazy white little mark, fungusy marks on its scales, which sort of like overwintering, they get that when they overwinter. But other than that, absolutely pristine, hard fighting mirror. Whew, frightened the life out of me, pulled my arms off. <laughs> and another bit of action, nice bit of daytime action. Here we go. Right, got to get that rod back out. Like it here, great this place. But can't stop. We'll get that rod back out. Yep, 
Yeah, I mean, everything's sort of weather dependent, but definitely when it comes to water, especially this time of year more than any other, it really does pay to try and pick the right one. And uh, really what seems to make the difference is, is depth. It's mainly down to depth. You know, we've come here and, uh, you know, it's, it's generally a shallow lake anyway, but it has got extreme shallows, less than a metre. And that's where they all are. You know, they're trying to get in those shallows to warm up. And I've fished deep waters at this time of year and really struggled. You know, it's just really a month too early. They, you know, it's common sense really. Those deeper waters take longer to warm up. The shallow ones, you know, in the sunshine like this, they warm up quick. So, you know, it stands to reason the carp wake up quicker. So, you know, whenever I'm sort of doing spring sessions, I try and pick the waters that are going to suit that time of year. Later on, it's not so important. They all switch on at a certain time and then through the summer and autumn they all fish but at this time of year it makes a lot of difference getting it right or you know in some cases getting it wrong. Not a monster but certainly a nice pretty one, hard fighting again. And another one from that same spot down there. It's funny, you know, that, um, you know, all the time I'm putting bait in, they're coming back for it. It's definitely building the spot up. And, uh, well, that's the way it's meant to be. You know, quality food is meant to keep them coming back for more, and, and that's what they're doing. So, uh, you know, it's all working the plan. Right, so we're 24 hours in anyway, and uh, so far, so good. It's gone really well. Um, six bites. One lost, unfortunately, but you know, that's that happens. But five nice fish landed, so uh, all in all, actually better than what I could have hoped for, I think. I wasn't really sure how I was gonna go about it, put it that way. Information was actually quite hard to find on this lake. Um, I've, I've heard about the lake in the past, but actual information was very thin on the ground. But when I saw pictures of it, and actually when I arrived, it's quite similar to some of the lakes I've fished in the past, you know, around the Limoges area, a little bit further south, that have got this sort of dam at one end, slightly deeper there, going up to the inlet where you've got the shallows. And up this shallows end, there's a lot of little bays and inlets, little grassy islands, and that is very similar to some of the lakes I've fished in the past. And so all I did really was fish it the same way as I fished those lakes, which was this time of year, head for the shallows, put it near to the inlets. Well, sure enough, it's, it's worked, you know, it's worked very well. Okay, I mean, it's, it's all happening on one rod, and which is basically the rod closest to the inlet. But yeah, you know, I'm not complaining. I've, six fish in 24 hours is a really nice result. And you know, the plan seems to be working. So uh, let's hope it carries on that way. People always ask me actually if I'm still fish in the UK and the answer is yes um, but not as much as I used to or or I'd like to really you know I still love fishing in the UK but I'd need need two lifetimes to do it all that's how it is really um, there's just not enough time in the year to do everything there's there's not enough time to fit in all the European waters I want to fish in a year and so really what always suffers is me UK fishing you know what tends to happen is like this you know we book this up in advance we know we're coming here and gradually I get more and more trips booked up and the English fishing has sort of got to fit in in between all that somehow so yeah it's a bit of a shame because there's there's lots I'd like to do in the UK but look at it here you know <laughs> it's cold and horrible back in England it's lovely and warm and sunny here so uh, this wins I'm afraid <laughs> Well, it's a lovely morning and it's been another eventful one. Nice grey one, this one, for a change. 
most strange than the others, but um, there's a couple more waiting to show you as well, so I'll get them out in a minute, but yeah, it's all been going well this morning. Right, that's bait ready to go out anyway. And uh, I've got a bit of a mix and match really, I suppose you'd call it this session. I've actually got bait left over from my last trip out, which is uh, some old dead maggots that I've got to put in the freezer, um, some hemp and some maize. So I've mixed all them together. But my basis for all my trips really is, is quality boilies. So I've got the Scopet squid. But, you know, because it's spring and the fish aren't feeding heavily, um, instead of putting out lots of whole boilies, I've actually crumbed them up and put them in the mix, so it's all in there. Uh, so there's a variety of sort of flavours and textures in there. Mainly to, you know, try and get as much attraction into that little area as possible. It's not um, fishing its head off, you know, you're fishing for bites really at this sort of time. They're just waking up. So that's the plan anyway, yeah. So it's all in there, just time to get out there and put it on the spots now. Right, just moving this one to a slightly different area. It was out the front there, but I've seen a bit of movement down in the back here, so just gonna give it a little go down here somewhere. It's quite firm and about, I should imagine two and a half foot deep feels pretty good there actually. I'll give it a go there. It's about in the right area. I think fish are coming through between these little islands around the back here. Give it a go anyway. Well I suppose one of the main things with traveling away is you've got to take gear with you that you know is going to do the job and you can rely on because you can't just go home and get more so like me go-to rods really are 12 foot three and a half toros they've got a nice bit of backbone to them and they they cover all my fishing needs really whether it's fishing locked up range fishing or even close in stuff you know they they do cope with it nicely so you know i know they're going to do the job and uh Line, I suppose, I'm mainly a mono user and it's it's sort of got to be £15 at least, really. I'm fishing locked up on a couple of them and it's coping well with that and yeah, it might go a bit stronger. I very rarely go less than, than 15 Yeah, and I suppose they all sit on a, on a rod pod, really. I'm, I'm quite new to rod pods in the last few years. I used to use bank sticks and all sorts, but the thing with a pod is, whether it's a pontoon, whether it's rocky ground or here, nice grassy banks, you know, it covers all situations so it's easier just to put the pod in and you know it's gonna do the job so you know it's a lot easier all round. In sort of general I do tend to take a lot more gear for the, the Euro trips you know you're away for longer periods and uh, we like to be self-sufficient really on the bank don't really want to be shooting around looking for stuff going to shops all the time I want to be fishing so you know I tend to bring it all and a lot of the time we're basically going to be fishing one swim you know there are situations where we move around but a lot of it is like this you know we've got this swim it's where we are for the session so why not make it as comfortable as possible so you know we've got the Titan T3 which fits me and Joan in perfectly there's lots of room in there and you know over the course of a week it's nice to have a bit of space you don't want to be cramped inside a bivvy for a week especially if it's raining but you know with that in mind We've also got the gazebo, which, you know, is fantastic for not only just sitting in during the day, you know, for cooking, for sorting your gear out. You know, you've got room to spread things about, tying rigs. And, uh, you know, if it does rain for a few days, you can sit in there and it's comfortable. It's all about comfort and convenience. You know, why be uncomfortable when you don't need to be? I love it. It's, it's sturdy. 
Uh, it, I mean, if the wind, it doesn't move, you don't need any guy ropes. Plus also, um, it's not just for, um, for cooking or for sitting in there. Sometimes what we do is we, we put the beds in, depends where we are. We, we actually sleep in there and it's, it's like being in a little bungalow. It's fantastic, <laughs> it's lovely. Really, really enjoy it. Well, that is just about the end of proceedings really. It's been a great week, but the weather's certainly taken a turn for the worse. It's cold, the temperatures are dropping. And it's quite miserable really, but thankfully we did end up with this little one. You know, action certainly slowed down. Best half was certainly the first half of the trip. But all the time we can catch fish like this, I'm happy. It's been a lovely trip. You know, we have had some lovely fish and Good at juggling, you know. <laughs> but it has been a, a cracking week, and uh, this is a fantastic venue. Really pleased to uh, have spent a few days here catching fish like this. But there we go, all good things come to an end. So, uh, yeah, time to pack away now and uh, head back to England. I've not had many real disasters over the years thankfully that you know they've, they've only been a few but there, there have been some the second trip i ever went abroad actually was to cassian and although it ended up being a really good trip fish wise which thankfully it saved the trip really because everything else went wrong you know the car absolutely felt a bit i mean it's a long story but that it literally felt a bit the car it took us five days to get home and the exhaust part we had to go and pick it up at the end of the road when we got home it literally fell off Thankfully we caught them fish, but you know, other trips, there, there was a, a trip again to Cassian actually, 2010 it was, and I'd got some bait rolled by a company, I'm not gonna say the company, but they had rolled me some of this bait, and when I got it, I thought, that don't smell right. It didn't smell horrible, but it didn't smell right. And I could not get a bite on that. Literally three weeks on the bank, fishing all different swims, other people were catching, and I just wasn't. And it, it was, really getting to me and and we moved swims and uh what we do is is sit in one boat and load a second boat up with all the gear well it was that cold that i'd actually split the boat without knowing it getting in to load the gear so when we got to the next swim december the boat was full of water all their clothes the bedding bivy everything dvd player the lot was all underwater you know and it was a nightmare and that night it's go, it, I'm nearly finished on this <laughs> that night a local fire station did a, a, a training session on the lake with speed boats going around the lake all night they wiped out all my rods so I'd gone three weeks without a bite all of the gear was soaked and all my rods had been wiped out and uh, it was a nightmare but I borrowed a bag of bait off my mate I think it was monster squids back then put them on and that night I had a 48 pound mirror, a beautiful scaly mirror, and like the whole world was a better place after that. Even just a few weeks ago, you know, we had a bit of a struggle on the lake. It, all, it was all looking good. You know, a few other anglers turned up, which sort of cut the fish off, and it was a real struggle. You know, and then you come to a place like this, and everything seems to pan out just right. You know, we've landed on the fish, we're getting action, the sun's out, the bait's working. <laughs> Uh, and everything's fine, so the world is a lovely place today. <laughs>